Hi guys, welcome to Techie DIY. In today's video, I'm going to look at a small desktop CNC machine called the WM3020, which with the supplied spindle can mill aluminium and other non-ferrous metals. All three axes run on HG15 linear rails and they're driven by 12 mm ball screws with NEMA 17 stepper motors. The table bed is machined from aluminium with M6 threaded holes for work holding. And this is how the table bed is attached to the white axis linear rails and ball screw nut, all quite solid. The machine measures 490 by 470 by 395 millimeters with a weight of 13.8 kilograms and the usable working area is 290 by 220 by 70 millimeters. The supplied spindle motor is a 52 millimeter 300 watt brush unit with an ER11 collet and I measured the maximum unloaded speed as 10,300 RPM. An optional 65 millimeter spindle holder is available for the installation of a more powerful router or VFD type spindle motor. The control electronics are housed in a steel case with a knob to set the spindle speed, an emergency stop switch, home, pause and resume buttons. On the front there is a USB type B connector for a computer and a connector for an optional offline controller. On the back we have the connectors for the stepper motors, limit switches, optional laser module, spindle motor, power switch and an IEC power connector. This is what we have under the lid. There is a power supply. The stepper motor drivers are located under the heatsink. And then an HK32 F103 C8 T6 ARM Cortex 32-bit microcontroller. The control box is connected to the machine by a cable loom, which partially runs through a cable chain. The machine was supplied in a single well-packed cardboard box, and this is what came inside. The manual is very good. It covers the machine assembly, the software installation, and initial use. The assembly itself is simple. The gantry is bolted onto the base frame. You can raise it up on some spacers to make the process easier. Then bolt on the spindle holder, install the spindle motor, install the cable chain, and then finally plug in the connectors, which are all labelled, so you can't go wrong. Select the power supply voltage, plug in the power lead, the USB cable, release the emergency stop switch, and now we're ready to install the software. But before we do that, a quick message from today's video sponsor. PCBWay are best known for their high quality, affordable, rapid manufacturing services, including PCB design, manufacture and assembly, with prototype PCBs available from $5 for 10 units and assembly available from $30 for 20 units. PCB Way currently also have an extra 15% off Flex and Flex Rigid PCBs, which are available from $111. Other services include CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication and injection molding. To get a quote, just select the process, select the material and the options. PCB Way is a one-stop shop for your project needs. For more information, check the link in the description. The software is supplied on a USB stick. The driver and candle were copied into a directory on the laptop's C drive. Candle is used to control the machine and send G code to it. The device driver was installed. The USB cable was plugged in. And we can check that it's working by running Windows Device Manager selecting ports, COM and LPT, and then checking the device status. Candle was run by double clicking on the Gerbil Control candle.exe file. The machine starts in a locked state to remind us to home the machine. So we press the unlock button and then the home button. Homing is the process the machine uses to find its starting position. We can select the step size and then jog the machine. Turn the spindle on. Speed is controlled by the knob on the control box rather than by G-code commands. The Gerbil settings can be updated by typing commands into the console. $30 is the maximum spindle speed. $130 is the maximum x-axis travel distance. $131 is the maximum y-axis travel distance. And $132 is the maximum z-axis travel distance. 
dollar 110 111 and 112 set the maximum feed rates for each axis the height probe touch plate is supplied uninsulated and sometimes this causes problems so i've covered the back with some tape to configure the probing candle go to service settings there's an existing probe script i copy the first part of the script into user button one and then enable the user commands under panels. Now we can use the probe to measure the touch plate's height. One of the supplied V bits is installed. The touch plate is placed upside down on a metal sheet so that they make electrical contact. The crock clip is connected to the V bit and then in candle, user button one is pressed to initiate the probe. Once the probe makes contact, we can zero the Z axis Jog the z-axis up, flip over the touch plate, press user button 1 again, and then the z-axis coordinate gives the height of the touch plate. We can now enter the touch plate height into the original probe script. Use the probe to zero the z-axis to the surface of the MDF. Jog to the front left hand corner and zero the X and Y axes. There are some example G code files included on the USB stick which we can load with file open and then send to the machine. Next I designed a spoil board in Fusion 360 with a 45mm square grid pattern. The spoil board was made from some old chipboard and attached to the table bed with tape and mitre adhesive. I used the V-bit to create some pilot holes. Finished drilling the holes by hand and the spoil board was reattached using M6 bolts and washers a 22mm flat end mill was used to level the sporeboard, zeroing the z-axis on the lowest area. If it doesn't flatten the whole surface, then I just run the job again. Now that the sporeboard is level, let's try cutting aluminium. I've created a test model in Fusion 360 with a 2D adaptive roughing toolpaths and a 1 8 of an inch single flute end mill. All of the toolpaths start with a 2 degree helix, cutting down to the final depth of 2 millimeters, and then cutting the pockets with different optimal loads and feed rates. The feed rate is calculated based on the material, the spindle speed, the end mill diameter, and the number of flutes. To increase the feed rate, we could either increase the spindle speed, use a larger diameter end mill, or increase the number of flutes. The optimal load and depth of cut are limited by the rigidity of the machine, and the power and torque available from the spindle. Tests like these help to find a good balance between the feed rate and the load, and they also help us to understand the capabilities of the machine. For the second set of tests, I cut another pocket with a 1.2 millimeter optimal load, and then followed up with a 2D contour tool path with a depth of 0.1 millimeters and a step over of 0.5 millimeters. This tool path took a total of three minutes and 18 seconds to complete. Then I cut a pocket with an 0.4 millimeter optimal load, which gives a better surface finish to start with
and then followed up with a 2D pocket toolpath with a depth of 0.1mm and a step over of 0.1mm. This toolpath taken 11 minutes and 35 seconds. Next I installed a 6mm single flute end mill and increased the feed rate. And finally I tried a 5mm 3 flute end mill. Next I created a model for a right angle bracket. The holes were cut with bore operations. I screwed down the sheet to avoid having to use work holding tabs and the outline was cut with a contour operation. Next up was PCB milling, starting with a simple test PCB, which was created as an electronic design in Fusion 360. Milling and drilling takes place on the bottom of the PCB, and so the design needs to be flipped. So under Manufacturing, CAM Processor, Bottom Copper, Advanced, I selected the Mirrors Gerber Output Horizontally button. The same was repeated for drills, then the Process button to save the Gerber manufacturing files to the local disk. Next, I used FlatCam to generate the G-code files. The spoil board was resurfaced to make it as level as possible. Then the copper clad PCB board was attached to the spoil board with tape and CA glue. An 0.1mm 10 degree V-bit was installed in the collet. The copper layer on the PCB board is very thin, approximately 1.37 mils or 0.035mm, and the board is not flat. So to get the best results, the height mapping feature in Candle was used to measure the heights in a grid pattern. When it's finished we select the edit mode button and check use height map. Candle then modifies the g-code to take account of the height variations and we can send it to the machine. The tip of the end mill is very delicate so a slow feed rate is used to help reduce the risk of it breaking off. Next, the V-bit was swapped with an 0.6mm drill and the height zeroed with the probe. Finally, the drill was swapped for a 2mm corn mill, the height zeroed again and the G-code sent to the machine. Next, I designed a PCB for converting a PWM signal into a 0-10V DC output which can then be used to control the speed of an upgraded VFD type spindle. To make the design easier to mill, I've increased the pad sizes and the track widths. Flat cam was used to create the G-code and a height mapping operation was initiated from Candle. The 
the G-code was sent to the machine. And if you listen carefully, the tip of the V-bit broke off. Rather than replace the V-bit, I took a gamble, re-zeroed it and started the job again. This resulted in wider cut widths, but it was okay because I started with thicker pads and traces. The V-bit was swapped for an 0.6mm drill and zeroed. Then a 1mm drill for the larger component pins. And finally a 2mm corn mill was used to cut out the profile of the PCB. Next the components were soldered to the PCB and to test it the input was connected to the laser output from the WM3020 control box. An oscilloscope was connected to the PCB input and output. The yellow line is the PWM input with 1 volt per division. And the pink line is the output with 5 volts per division. As the spindle switches on and the speed increases, the duty cycle of the PWM signal increases and the output voltage rises to a maximum of 9.8 volts. This can be connected to the 0-10V speed control input of a VFD power supply to automatically control the speed of a more powerful spindle motor. Ok, so I think that this is an excellent little desktop CNC machine. It features linear rails and ball screws, which helps to give the machine good rigidity and accuracy, both of which are important when it comes to milling aluminium. To get the best out of the machine, it would benefit from a more powerful spindle motor. The obvious choices are a Makita trim router, or a 65mm VFD spindle motor, which I'll be testing in a future video. There are also laser modules available to fit the machine. This is the 10 watt optical output module, which is quite powerful and capable of cutting through wood. It fits into the spindle holder and connects to the control box. I've used Lightburn software to control it, and if you want to know more, have a look at the Vasto video on this channel. The machine is currently on offer for Black Friday at $719, and if you're interested, the link is in the video description. If you found this video useful, please let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and see you again next time.